Uh, just Uds and Jan. Uh, so if you've got any issues or any problems, speak to them, and they will definitely sort you out, we hope. And um, fire exits, if you need a fire exit, or if we need one, one there, one over there. And the toilets for those of those who are not used to the building are down the corridor and round about, but stewards will point you in the right direction. Okay, we're going to start this morning with a classic song, My Jesus, My Saviour, and the band are going to lead us in. you. We want to thank you for who you are and all that you have done for each one of us. Help us this morning as we come together just to want to focus on yourself. Take those things out of our minds that are going to be unhelpful. Help us just to think and to concentrate on yourself and what you have to say to us. So we just want to commit this time to you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We have some notices. Uh, they're going to go on a PowerPoint, hopefully. Oh, ready to go. Okay. <clears throat> Churches Together prayer meeting. This week, 10th of April. That's Wednesday, 7.30, Our Lady of Lords. That's just up the road here. So all welcome. Oh, not going again. We've also just advanced notice, Glee Chapel meeting. This is a church meeting. It'll be the following week on the Tuesday, on the 16th of April. Uh, that'll be in the dining hall, not here in the dining hall. 
uh, give you an update on what's going on um, and what we're planning to do in the future. But uh, for then, ooh. Skittles and lunch. This is a little word at the top that says connecting men. So if you're, if you're a woman, I'm afraid it's not connecting with you. Um, <clears throat> but it's the last chance to sign up. So, uh, and it's five pound, I better put that out there, five pound. So that's, uh, I'm trying to think of the date, but it's, it's on there somewhere. 20th. 20th. I can't see from that. Yes, so, uh, so I've got a small version up here, which is <laughs> not good for my eyesight. And for those of you who remember Ellie, who used to be here in the church here, uh, her and Phil have had a, a baby boy, and they've called him uh, Benjamin, or Benjamin. And so uh, congratulations to them. And if you have a birthday in April, we're going to do what we normally do and uh, sing happy birthday to you. I don't know if I've got any volunteers to take these round, but if you're still birthday, if you're going to stand up, um, and if I can have a couple of younger volunteers, so one each side, do you want to take some round? No? If I, if I can't get any volunteers, I'll ask after the stewards. Okay, stewards. If your birthday's in April, can you please stand up? Happy birthday The stewards are running off quick with the sweets, so... Um, <laughs> okay. We're going to do our call to worship. I'm going to read some verses from Psalm 63. Well-known verses. Just uh, sit and listen. <clears throat> and it says this. O God, you are my God. I earnestly search for you. My soul thirsts for you. My whole body longs for you in this parched and weary land where there is no water. I have seen you in your sanctuary and gazed upon your power and glory. Your unfailing love is better than life itself. How I praise you. I will praise you as long as I live, lifting up my hands to you in prayer. You satisfy me more than the richest feast. I will praise you with songs of joy. And then we're going to sing a couple of songs now. <clears throat> How great thou art and his mercy is more. So when the band are ready...
going to do a quick quiz that comes up on the PowerPoint. There we go. Spring quiz, I've called it. And uh, this is particularly for the youngsters. But if the youngsters don't know the answer, the older ones can shout out, OK? OK, nice and simple, hopefully. So somebody shout out, who's young? Daffodils. And that's the correct answer as well. Daisies. Brilliant. I think they're taken in our own garden. <laughs> Slightly harder. It's a bit closer up. Oh, what one? Buttercup. You're right. Cowslip. By the way, these are all names of cows as well, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> what are these? Not tulips. Crocuses. Crocuses. Or crocus. Yeah. But they are plural in this case. <coughs> Crocai. Crocai, is it? Crocai. <laughs> <I know. laughs> What's this? I did hear an old, older, uh, older person answer it. Primrose, yes. <clears throat> Bit harder, this one. Ooh. All right, see if anybody knows yet, William. Oh, Jan thinks he knows. I do, I do. Let me tell you. You can. I think they're great piercings, aren't they? And my answer agrees with you as well. That's, that's pretty good. <clears throat> I think we got some in our garden, but I never knew what they were. Tulips. <laughs> Anybody know what this is? Younger ones first. It's not cherry blossom. Anybody, anybody want to shout out what they think it is? I used to always call it May, but um, <coughs> Hawthorne is what it's on. <coughs> Magnolia, brilliant. Foxglove. I heard it over there somewhere. Lily of the Valley. <clears throat> There's a bit in the centre rather than all the bits around about it, OK? <laughs> I'm sure somebody said it. Cow parsley. Cow parsley. It is a blossom. I did hear someone say over here. Cherry blossom. Anybody know what it is? Gorse. Whoa. We've got an expert here. <clears throat> okay, Alan, we'll put you on spot for the next one, okay? What's that one? Broom. Broom. <laughs> it's very similar to gorse, but the gorse has got the prickles and the broom hasn't. I think that's, I think that's a lot. Okay, if the, if the youngsters want to go out now to their Sunday clubs, that'll be brilliant. <laughs> youngsters, if you want to go out, please do.
I'm just going to do uh, a reading from God's Word, and it's what we'll be looking at later with Andy. It's from John chapter 20 and verse 19. That Sunday evening, the disciples were meeting behind locked doors because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders. Suddenly, Jesus was standing there among them. Peace be with you, he said. As he spoke, he showed them the wounds in his hands and his side. They were filled with joy when they saw the Lord. Again, he said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. Then he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. One of the twelve disciples, Thomas, nicknamed the twin, was not with the others when Jesus came. They told him, We have seen the Lord. But he replied, I won't believe it unless I see the nail wounds in his hands, put my fingers into them, and place my hand into the wound in his side. Eight days later, the disciples were together again, and this time Thomas was with them. The doors were locked, but suddenly, as before, Jesus was standing among them. Peace be with you, he said. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and look at my hands. Put your hand into the wound in my side. Don't be faithless any longer. Believe. My Lord and my God, Thomas exclaimed. Then Jesus told him, you believe because you have seen me. Blessed are those who believe without seeing me. And Andy uh, was going to come later on and um, talk about some of those verses. I'm just going to put Andy on the spot now. <coughs> um, <laughs> Firstly, this is Andy, and he's going to be our speaker this morning. Ah, morning. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to ask you first, where were you born? Ooh, I was born in, well, don't tell anyone, I was born in Croydon. All oh, right. I was, I was expecting a, another, another, cal- another city beginning with C to be your yeah, birthplace. Uh, 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 and then I was reborn five and a half weeks later when my parents came from Cardiff and picked me up. So oh, okay. I was adopted as a baby. Ah. So, uh, yeah, so I got two mums. Right. And I had two dads. Okay. But both of them were with the Lord. Was okay. Yeah, go on. So I, I was expecting to say Cardiff. So yeah, that's so, thrown yeah, me already. So, yeah, uh, that, that was good. Yeah, I always liked to. No, I, I, I grew up in Cardiff. So I'm Welsh, really. We won't say, we anything, about the, we won't say anything about the Six Nations yeah, we, at all now. No, no. Well, <coughs> I, I got a love spoon. Nice wooden love spoon, yeah. Not the wooden spoon? Not the, yeah, the wooden, nice wooden love spoon. So yeah, <laughs> we, that's what we give each other in Wales, you know. Okay. Uh, where do you live now? Uh, I live in Hereford. Right, and what, Hereford. Do, you, what do you do? Um, well, I part-time pastor um, Putson Baptist Church in Hereford. Uh, and part of my time I, I head up Show Jesus and uh, the rest of it I do quite a bit of itinerant evangelism and uh, uh, so I go from places and churches and preach and okay. uh, do evangelism and all sorts of things. Just tell us for those who don't know what Show Jesus is, um, that might be helpful. Show Jesus is, is, uh, was set up about 20 years ago and it was a sort of culmination. There were lots of people doing agricultural shows, um, um, market uh, place ministry and things so what we decided to do was and there was loads of equipment everywhere in garages garden sheds i remember going to one show royal welsh show every year and we used to go to an evangelist bruce anderson in newport and uh, there was stuff in his garage there was stuff in the summer house down the bottom of the garden there was stuff in his downstairs toilet uh, there was stuff upstairs in one of the bedrooms and it used to take us hours, it used to take us a day just to get the stuff out to put in a van. Just to say, it, this is a sort of tent thing you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, this is marquees and, and all sorts of things. So um, we, we, we actually um, put all the stuff into one Interesting to see a, a marquee in his bedroom. But. Well, he had, a, he had a huge pole, which we had broken into two, which actually just went the whole length of the garage. So uh, yeah, it, was, it was a nightmare. So we managed to get all the equipment together. Then we, we bought marquees. So we have, if you go to a, a big show and you see these clear span marquees, metal frame, um, we have enough marquee now to probably do this room probably two or three times, actually. We've got enough marquee and it's sectioned, we can put up. So what we've done is we've developed all the equipment. All the equipment now is stored at Hereford. Uh, in just where he has the roundabout is in Hereford, just as we've got a, an old garage there which is all stored in, and uh, we go off and we do shows, uh, um, so we'll be at the Royal Welsh Show this year. We're not going to be at the Three Counties this year. 
I did hear that. Yeah, we, we, that's a yeah, bit sad, they, isn't it? They, they took the decision, because um, I haven't been particularly well, um, that they thought, let's have a, a year's break. And uh, so it uh, gives us a year to get ourselves together again. But we will be at the Royal Welsh and some of the other smaller shows. Um, and we're looking at ways of getting into marketplaces, um, perhaps once a week, so we can actually just get the gospel out where people are, because people really are searching at the minute for the truth. I understand you also do, last time you came, you talked about a food bank or that type of yeah. ministry in, in, when, from, when, in Hereford. When COVID hit, um, <laughs> unusually, I was in hospital just before COVID. It's just a bit of a theme hospitals with me, so uh, don't worry about it. Um, I don't. Um, but... Uh, um, you listen to Boris talking about us going into lockdown and, and, and just God just placed on my heart how are people going to manage and, and we set up just a, a food parcels uh, project which I thought was going to go for about two or three months well we're four years on and uh, we're still going so this week we delivered 65 food parcels uh, to the community around us and, and, and sometimes north of the river as well in Hereford um, people can refer in we've got families we had age concern refer f uh, three older couples this week who, who just haven't got food. Um, so we, 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 we actually got, <laughs> we, you pray about it and God always supplies the need. And so the government, you might have heard it in the budget, something called the Household Support Fund. Um, we've got a great relationship with Herefordshire Council and uh, we are the, the provider of Household Support Fund for South of the River in Hereford. Um, so our budget at the minute for, for a year of just buying food is about £175,000 um, and that's being supplied from the local authority. Um, Brilliant. So it's amazing, you know, it really is that God, God will always supply the need. He's always ahead of us. Um, we've never not been able to supply a food parcel. That's fantastic. That's brilliant. I'll, I'll, <coughs> I'll just ask Julian to come up now as well. <coughs> um, Julian, you may or may not know, uh, has been coming to Glebe in the recent months, uh, but he's uh, had time in Malawi, 20 odd years, I think, uh, in the past, but he's going to Malawi in about a week or so time. Do you want to tell us what you're going to be doing? Okay, so I'm going out a, a week on Monday. I'll be spending uh, four weeks there, and we have a number of churches, quite a number of churches up and down the country. So my time will be spent teaching encouraging the leaders, helping them so they can disciple their churches. Evangelism in Malawi is not like the UK. We see people coming to the Lord every week. And the problem is that most of our church leaders are only months old in the Lord themselves. So training up the leaders so they can train up their members is the biggest work that remains for us. So you've got a fairly packed schedule or was there any sightseeing and tourism in, in amongst it? There, there won't be any tourism at all. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be four weeks of teaching, praying, and visiting churches. Brilliant. Okay, that's, uh, I think, thank you very much. We're going to just pray for you now, and uh, we'll pray for some of Andy's work as well. There's also to bear in mind, Graham is going to Romania next weekend, uh, helping with the uh, project there. And Ruth's in Uganda, or coming back as we speak, something like that, anyway. So we'll, we'll pray for those things. We'll Okay, so back sometime. <laughs> okay, let's just uh, pray for some of those things and we'll pray for Julian as well. <clears throat> Father, we want to thank you for what you're doing in this world. Uh, we thank you that you're working all over. We thank you for what you're doing in Hereford. I thank you for these uh, food banks and meeting people's needs in a very practical way. And we thank you for Andy and the team there that are... Uh, doing these things and working these things out. And we thank you too for the provision of funds, even from the local authority, and uh, vast amounts of money too. So we just give you thanks and praise for what you're doing. We pray for Julian as he goes to Malawi. Just uh, protect and keep him spiritually and physically, we pray, as it will be quite an arduous trip. We pray that you will just bless him and encourage him and be, uh, may this mission be fruitful in the... Uh, bearing a fruit in the lives of those that listen to your word and grow in maturity, we pray. We pray for Graham as he goes to Romania and uh, pray for him for protection too. And uh, we pray that you will just bless him and encourage him in the work there. 
And we pray for Ruth as she um, has the frustration of uh, things being, the plans not coming together as she would have possibly hoped and thought. But we just pray that you'll give her peace in her heart and provide for her needs, we pray. So we just commit these things to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Julian. Um, just to say, uh, going forward as a church, we are just starting today as an intro. Um, this is a sort of, we're going to start looking at the Holy Spirit. And we're going to have several weeks on, on the series on the Holy Spirit. So this week is a sort of transition between Easter and Pentecost. Uh, hence what I read, we read from John's Gospel. Uh, next week we'll be looking at who is the Spirit. The following week it will be guided by the Spirit and then filled by the Spirit, empowered by the Spirit, and life in the Spirit, part one, two, and three. <laughs> As we move forward, that include gifts, fruit, and, and walk, and those sort of things. So just to let you know what's coming up, uh, those are the type of things we'll be uh, talking about on a Sunday morning. So uh, pray for all those that um, are going to be preaching. And um, yeah, we just pray for uh, God's blessing upon that. We're going to sing a couple of songs now, and then I'll hand over to Andy. And we're going to sing, Be Still in the Presence of the Lord, and There Must Be More. Thank you, band.
as I was loading the, uh, the PowerPoint onto my memory stick, uh, I looked at the last time I was at, uh, uh, here at, uh, at Newington. In fact, it was over in the school, and it was uh, December 22, the first Sunday in December 22 I was here last. <laughs> now, since I've been here, uh, I worked, I was just working out, I think I've had two and a half heart attacks. Uh, I've had uh, several procedures over in Worcester. Uh, I've been over to um, Wolverhampton, Wolverhampton for, for a triple bypass. Um, and I'm back and forth to Hereford Hospital under the heart failure team. But I think I'm looking all right for it. <laughs> and uh, God's good, isn't he? Um, I actually said to the surgeon, the surgeon, I said, look, I said, and, and this depends on your, your, your view of the second coming, etc. but uh, your eschatology will, will, will decide this one. But I said to the, the surgeon, look, if you can just give me 10 years, I reckon that's all I'm going to need because I'm going to get a new body and a new heart. I won't need this one, so give me 10 years. And he just looked at me really gone off. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, I tell you what, what an opportunity you get when you're in hospital to share with people. And, uh, um, and w today we're going to look and we're going to start off the series on the Holy Spirit. And I'm really pleased to be starting it off. Um, and uh, I wasn't really given a passage, uh, so I chatted to Paul and, and I said, I just really felt that God was saying, just go with this passage because it links in the resurrection and it just gives us a start point on the Holy Spirit. And, and just using that, that, very, that phrase there, he breathed on them and they received the Holy Spirit. He breathed on them and they received the Holy Spirit. So we're going to look a little bit at what's going on in the resurrection and what's happening here when Jesus breathes on them and what happens and why it's different to what goes on in Acts, Acts chapter 2. So we're going to look quickly at that, this today. And I'm really pleased because uh, they said I had half an hour, so I should be finished round about sort of 22 to 12, somewhere like that. But it's only 10 past 10 according to the clock there. <laughs> so I got an hour and a half, so that's great. <laughs> Hallelujah. And those that know me can, I know that I can actually fill that time, no problem, honestly. Uh, but I'll try and be brief this morning. We see this instant, instant where Jesus appears to his disciples. But what has gone on before it? You see, that very day, the tomb has rolled, the, the stones rolled away, the tomb is empty, and the, what they do, they find the folded grave clothes. Hallelujah, Jesus is alive. Hallelujah. Thank you. I thought there was no one out there for a minute then. <laughs> Hallelujah, Jesus is alive. And the women go to the tomb first and they're worried about who's going who's to move the stone. And they get there, the stone's gone and, and the, the soldiers are lying prostrate on the floor. And they were able to just go straight in and they see the grave clothes there. And, and we read that an angel says to them, why are you looking for the living amongst the dead? He's alive. Go and tell the, go and tell the, the, the guys. Isn't it great it was the women that found out first? Isn't that great? You know, if, if anyone thinks the Bible's um, not, not for women, they need to read it. Because actually it is. And, and, and they actually find, and they go back, and they tell the disciples, and guess what? The disciples don't believe them. Isn't that good? The blokes don't believe them. So Peter and, 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 and John run to the tomb and they find it exactly and they go back and tell them and guess what? They don't believe them. Why? Because they didn't believe that the resurrection was going to happen. They, they hadn't clocked it. How many times had Jesus told them it was going to happen and, and yet they don't clock that it's going to happen. And they don't function because they, they don't understand the story. We read other stories. Mary then meets Jesus in the garden, Mary Magdalene. And she thinks he's the gardener and, and she's weeping so much she doesn't recognize him. And it's only when Jesus says, Mary, she suddenly hears that voice and she knows it's the Lord. And she goes back and tells them, and guess what? They don't believe her. Two men go into Emmaus and, and, and a man walks with them and they don't recognize him. But all the way there, he's telling them from Moses to the prophets. 
what was going to happen to the Messiah and he had to suffer and he had to die, but he was going to come back to life. And, and, and you know what? They're, they're captivated by what he's got to say and when they stop for supper, they, they implore him to come in. And the stranger picks up the bread and blesses it and breaks it and all of a sudden the scales come off their eyes and they recognize him. Let's never underestimate doing communion because when we do that, our, the scales come off our eyes and we see the Lord. What was a trudge from Jerusalem to Emmaus became a sprint back. And they burst in and they tell the, the, the guys, look, Jesus is alive and guess what? They don't believe him. Why didn't they believe him? Because they did not understand. They didn't understand what was going to happen. They didn't understand what Jesus had told them. You know, so often we can tell people till they're blue in the face, but they don't understand. And can I just start the series off by saying, if we want to understand, then we need the Spirit to interpret it to us. When we're preaching the gospel, we need the Spirit to bring people to understand what we are saying. Don't just assume that you can just use good words. My mother says, I've got an answer for everything. <laughs> and it's true. You know, I've got an answer for everything. If I'm in trouble, boy, I can talk my way out of it any time. Uh, and, and boy, when I was in school, that came in handy. Comes in handy still now. Bella will say, did you eat those biscuits? I don't know anything about those biscuits, love. They, uh, were there biscuits in the cupboard? You know there were biscuits in the cupboard because you bought them. Really? Did I? I can't remember doing that. You know, we think we're clever, don't we? But when we're, when we're talking to people about God, about Jesus, we need the Holy Spirit to interpret the disciples didn't get it. They didn't understand. They'd heard it so many times, and yet they still didn't understand that Jesus had to die, that Jesus was going to come back to life, and this was going to be the start of the kingdom. They didn't even understand what the kingdom was about either. So isn't that great? And all of a sudden, in the midst of this unbelief, in the midst of this fear because it says in our passage that they were meeting in secret for fear of the religious leaders <laughs> they were scared stiff that the same thing was going to happen to them as happened to Jesus when we read at the cross the women were at the cross we only read that John was there the others had scarpered <coughs> women were there though isn't that great and then all of a sudden Jesus appears to them and he shows them his hands and he shows them his side. And what does it say? It says the disciples were overjoyed. It doesn't say they understood why or what or whatever. They were just pleased to see Jesus. Easter Sunday, I watched the film Risen again. Uh, if you've not watched the film Risen, do you know there's bits and pieces in that film that I just get goosebumps because I can actually picture just being there because it just captures that moment uh, and, and there's a moment where the Roman soldier that's looking and it's a bit sort of you know add to the story I know but he walks in he opens the door and there's the, all the disciples sat there and right in the midst of them is Jesus and their eyes just meet and he remembers actually seeing Jesus on the cross and he recognizes it's him. But when you look at that film, when you see the disciples, all, every time you see the disciples, they're like giggly kids. Why? Because Jesus is alive. And let's not lose sight of the fact that there was joy because Jesus was alive. I've been in churches where people tell me, yeah, Jesus is alive. <laughs> And it's like as if we need to have another funeral service. Folks, Jesus is alive and he's alive today. And because he's alive, we have hope. Death for us is win-win. You know, for me to live is Christ, to die is gain. <laughs> Why? Because Jesus is alive. We have to rejoice. The disciples were overjoyed. 
But Jesus knew that they still didn't understand. So what does it say? And when he had said this, he breathed into them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. What's going on at this point? What is actually going on at this point? Let me just emphasize again, this is not Pentecost. Pentecost was going to be another 50 days on from here. This is not Pentecost. In fact, Jesus says to them, you need to remain in this city and you will receive the helper from above. You know, the gospel tells us that Jesus needed to be glorified. He needed to go back to heaven so that he could send his spirit back. Two different events. This was a specific time that they needed that to receive the Holy Spirit. There will be times in our lives when we need to receive the Holy Spirit, and it's almost like a special anointing that we need. When I was being rushed over in a, on a blue light ambulance from Hereford County to New Cross Hospital in, Wolf, in Wolverhampton, I, I knew there were a load of people praying for me. Uh, and I, people, people text me and I said, just pray that, that, that God will just fill me with his spirit and just give me peace. When I went to the anesthetic room, the, the, an, the, the anesthetist came to me the, the next day. He said, you know, he said, I don't think I've ever put anyone out who was as peaceful as you. He said, you were smiling. He said, you were cracking jokes. Interestingly, Hereford sent over and said, he is pretty ill. Um, when he gets there, you'll be cracking loads of jokes and he'll be a laugh a minute. In fact, we're convinced that his last words will be a joke. I was quite pleased with that because I thought, you know, it's really nice you know, that they... But there was just a real sense of peace. When I woke up after the operation in intensive care, I opened my eyes and I can remember my first words. Morning! And they went, oh, we better get that tube out then, because you seem okay. Within half an hour, I was sat in a chair. And, and I'm convinced that that was because God just gave me an extra measure of his spirit as I went on that journey. You know, it just gave me a great opportunity to share what was going on. You know, it's, it's, it's amazing when we have that. There's a reason that Jesus breathes on them here, the Holy Spirit. Luke tells us this, then, and this is, I, I believe this is the same uh, occurrence there. It says, then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. He opens their minds so they can understand what it was that Jesus was going to go through, what he was, had to go through, and, what, and the whole process. All of a sudden, their minds are opened, and they are able to understand I, I, I take, take that very much when you're trying to disciple people who are young and everything else, and then you're trying to bring them through. I think one of the challenges today is how do we disciple people? Particularly in our country where people have no knowledge whatsoever of Scripture. We, we have a whole generation, several generations that are coming through now who are, number one, have been brought up godless, have been brought up that the, the, the Bible is just, a, 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 just a, a book of fables, if they've ever read it. I, I don't know whether you watched, um, I've only watched the first one, but I, 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 um, it was a, um, the BBC always do that pilgrimage program at Easter time, and they get all sorts of celebrities who come from all sorts of backgrounds and everything. And there was a guy on there, and, and they call them celebrities, I don't know why, because anyone that comes on there, I'm sitting there thinking, I haven't got a clue who you are. I did know Michaela Strachan, if I'm honest, because she was doing wildlife programs when, I was, when my kids were young, and I remember watching them. But other than that, I was really not sure who anyone was, but there was a guy on there from Made in Chelsea. Now, you know, <laughs> yeah, I'm saying that like as if I know what Made in Chelsea is. Um, but uh, um, I thought it was something to do with Chelsea football, so I definitely wasn't going to watch it, but sorry if you're a Chelsea fan. But um, this guy from... He actually... The, 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 there was a, a, a lady on there who, uh, who'd been on another programme, and uh, 
She said to him, but Jesus is a real person. And he's chatting to a chaplain, sat on a mountain, looking over this huge valley. And, and she, she actually said to him, no, he's a real person in history. And he said, well, that starts to make a bit of sense. He said, I just thought he was just a made-up character. I'm thinking, how on earth, in this country, do we actually have people who think that Jesus is just a made-up character and not a person, at least a person from history? That's the level of people that we are dealing with in this country, and we are called to make disciples. So I have people coming to me saying, well, I tried reading the Bible, and it just doesn't make sense. And you know what? I think for someone who's just picking up a Bible from scratch then probably, I, I, I probably would go with them on it because it's hard, it's not the easiest book to read, is it? And this is why, and, and, and we need the Holy Spirit to come and help us to understand what we are reading. Do you know, I've met Christians who've been running for 40, 50 years who say they're struggling reading their Bible. And I said, well, you know, have you prayed that God will send his Spirit to help you to understand? No. Do you know, it's revolutionary when they do go and pray that and ask God. All of a sudden, they say, I'm starting to understand things. Really? Really? Because the Holy Spirit is there to help us to understand, to understand what God wants to tell us. Because it's, and, and the disciples were going to experience the Holy Spirit was going to come and was actually then going to dwell in our lives. But I'm not going to go there because I'm going to step on someone else's subject. But here, the Holy Spirit comes so they can understand what Jesus has been saying all the way through his ministry, what, what he'd explained to those guys on the way to Emmaus. I reckon that must have been the best sermon ever. Because he starts at Moses, right at the beginning of the Bible, and he works his way through it. No wonder they didn't want him to go. all of a sudden, their minds are opened and they are able to understand the Scriptures. If you want to get to know the Scriptures, folks, then we need the Holy Spirit there to interpret us for us. Now, I'm not knocking using um, commentaries. I'm not knocking using Bible dictionaries and all those. Get as much as you can to help you. But if you, you can have all the best tools there but if you haven't got the Holy Spirit with you, then you're not going to get it. Because the Holy Spirit will lead you into all truth. Now they'd seen, I, I, the disciples had seen the Holy Spirit in action in Jesus' life. When we come to his baptism, Jesus goes in and, and John, John the Baptist says, oh, yeah, I don't need to baptize you. And he says, yes, you do. And, and in the end, he agrees to baptize him and he baptizes him. And then all of a sudden, what happens? The heavens opened and a dove descends. What's that dove represent? The Holy Spirit coming upon Jesus. Now, Jesus needed to have the Holy Spirit with him always. He was always there. He was there with his spirit. The spirit was there. That's why Jesus says that you will do what I do, and you will do more. Because he knows the indwelling of the Holy Spirit enables us to do things. Jesus wasn't, Jesus came down, and he was God in, in human form, but he limited himself to a human body. And the Holy Spirit enabled him to do, ultimately, far more than we could ever think or dream. And that's why Jesus says you can do beyond what you think. Why? Because the Holy Spirit will enable us to do that. But look what happens after Jesus' baptism. It says that he goes off into the wilderness. But there's a phrase there, led by the Spirit. So the disciples had seen in Jesus' life the Spirit coming down, but also the leading of the Holy Spirit. And had led him out. Jesus says these words in John. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers 
of living water. I'm just going to read the next tiny verses on that one, because it then says, By this he meant the Spirit, whom he believed in him, were late, who believed in him were later to receive. So Jesus himself des describes it as a river of living water. So they'd seen all of these things in Jesus' life. And here now they receive the Holy Spirit and they're able to understand what Jesus is saying. Folks, let's not underestimate the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives to help us and draw us closer to God. He is the channel that God works through us, speaks to us, and helps us to understand, draws us to God. He's living and vibrant and, and wants to be part of our lives. Well, this morning, I just want to ask a question. So what? So what? You know, it happened to the disciples. We know what happens at Pentecost. What, what, what about it? What, what does it mean for us this morning, sat here in Newant? What does it mean for us? What does it mean for us going forward this week? What does this mean? It opened their minds so they could understand the Scriptures. We need the Holy Spirit to help us, to help us to grow, to help us to understand, to help us to understand what God is saying to us. And it's important that we get that fact. It was important that the disciples started to understand what was supposed to happen, what was going to happen, what was predicted that was going to happen. When I got to Putson, there were several people who said, I understand that you're going to preach from the Old Testament. Yeah. Why are you preaching for the Old Testament? I said, because if you want to understand the New Testament, you need to understand the Old Testament. But we're afraid of the Old Testament. Now, these were people who'd, who'd been Christians for a good number of years. We're afraid of the Old Testament. Why is that? Well, we don't understand it. Boy, that was a great journey. <laughs> it was a really great journey as we went through understanding what it says about, you know, is going to happen in the Old Testament. Why God does things in the Old Testament. Why he says things in the Old Testament. What's predicted there in the Old Testament. You could preach the whole East, uh, Christmas and Easter story from the Old Testament without the New Testament. Did you know that? It's great. But unless we have the Holy Spirit helping us and interpreting it for us and helping us as we go, then we're really going to struggle. So first of all, we need the Holy Spirit to help us to understand. Secondly, but when the Spirit of truth comes, He will guide you into all truth. You know, if we want to be guided into all truth, then we need the Holy Spirit. I, I, I have to say that I look around and, and I, I do tend to, to meet lots of people from different denominations uh, and I'm shocked sometimes by some of the theology that people are talking to me about. You know, what they understand the Bible says on, on all sorts of issues. Folks, if we do not have the Holy Spirit as our grounding point, don't, don't be surprised if we wander off into all sorts of errors. Because the Holy Spirit will lead us in to all truth. Third thing. As God sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world, Jesus prays before he goes to the cross. What does he say afterwards? Again, he, Jesus said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. The reason that we need the Holy Spirit because we are being sent. We may not be going to Malawi, but we may be going to, to Newton Town Centre. We may be going to work tomorrow. Do you know, these words weren't just said to the apostles. They were sent to all of us. Jesus says, go into all the world and make disciples of all nations. 
And lo, I am with you always. He's with us through his spirit. The tendency is, is that we, we, draw, we, we, we grab an evangelist and we think, right, okay, he'll come and do all the work. And No, 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 no. We're all evangelists, folks. We're all told to, 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 to share. I used the term last week in church about gossiping the gospel. It's a term I, you know, heard, when I, was, I heard when I was a, a, a wee bairn a few years ago. When was the last time you talked to someone about Jesus? In your friendship group, in your families, in the club that you play with, or, or, the, or the, 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 the work, you know, wherever you go, the school, the college, where, wherever you are. When was the last time that you actually shared about Jesus? We're all told to go and to do it, but we need help to do it. And the Holy Spirit is our helper. He's the one that's there with us, and he puts those words in our minds. Sometimes I'm talking to people on a showground and I think, Why, where on earth did that sentence come from? And you start this great conversation with someone and I haven't got a clue where that sentence came from. Sometimes I think, I'm not that clever. And it's the Holy Spirit. And he's reminding you of what you've read because you've understood it and it suddenly comes popping back. Jesus sends us. And then I'm going to come on to a hot potato. This verse here. We had a, a great session on, uh, was it Wednesday morning we had that? Seems like, seems like it's weeks ago now. But we had a great session on there. And uh, thanks, Tim Lewis, for bringing this up. He said, you're not going to skirt around this one, are you? So Tim, I'm not. I know he's not here, but he said he was going to listen to it. So thanks, Tim. Um, Jesus says these words, if you forgive anyone his sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now, does that mean we can go around forgiving people's sins? Does it mean that we suddenly become the, the, the Catholic priest up the road who's sitting in his confessional and, uh, you know, actually next week Paul's going to actually have a booth here and, and you can come in early and you can confess your sins and Paul will forgive you, okay? Is that okay? Okay. Um, that's not what Jesus is saying here. Jesus is saying as we go out and as we preach the gospel, then we can preach forgiveness. We can preach forgiveness to people because there is only one person who can forgive sins. Can Christians forgive sins? Well, I, I, I'm going to say it categorically, no. Let's go back to the to the, uh, the guy who's lowered through the roof. They lower that guy, don't they, through the roof, and they, they lower him before Jesus, and they're all expectant. They're expecting Jesus to say, get up and walk. You know, even when I hear the story now, I still expect it to happen, and I know how it ends. Because you almost expect that, you know, they've done it, they've lowered him down and everything, and... Uh, Jesus says to the paralyzed man, Son, your sins are forgiven. And the religious teachers go absolutely ballistic. Why? Because what does it say? Why does a man talk like that? He's blaspheming. Why is he blaspheming? Who can forgive sins but God alone? Let's not lose the fact that it's God that forgives sins. Through Jesus' death on the cross, he has paid the price. And he can offer us forgiveness. Why? Because he's paid the price. When we preach the gospel, we are preaching Christ crucified. When we preach, preach Christ crucified, we preach that Christ forgives sins. God forgives sins. So when Jesus says, when you, are, you can offer forgiveness, you can offer forgiveness but it's God that forgives sins. I have no power whatsoever to, to, to make a difference in anyone's eternal destiny. It's Jesus. It's all about the cross. It's all about the resurrection. It's all about the one who is coming back one day. And Jesus, through his death on the cross, 
offers us forgiveness. So folks, go and make disciples. Go and make disciples, making sure that they are spirit-filled disciples. Because without the spirit, we can do nothing. Because we need that spirit in us to understand, to guide us, to lead us, so that we have all those things in our lives. And the disciples were told to wait. Wait. I'm not a good wait person. We had a prayer meeting the other night, and the, and the guy leading the prayer meeting led it on, uh, t- telling us to wait on the Lord. Boy, yeah, that was for me. Yeah, I, 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 from December through to beginning of March, I was just at home recovering. And I was going stir-crazy in my chair. But it was a good lesson on wait. Wait. It was worth it because... 50 days later, the Holy Spirit came in power. And no longer were they locked in an upper room door, door door locked. They burst out and they preached and 3,000 came to faith. Then another 2,000 came to faith and they turned the then known world upside down. And that's what we need today. That's what we need today. As we close, Jesus breathed on them the Holy Spirit. Today is Jesus breathing his spirit on us and leading us and guiding us. And I really hope that as as the rest of this series goes, that we will really get to grips. I'm going to be listening in because I want to to catch up on what everyone else says, especially as I've been in the pre-meeting. I really want to listen to it. Let's get to grips with this. And let's really go away from this empowered by the Holy Spirit to do what he's calling us to do. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you that Jesus gives this moment where he breathes into his disciples the Holy Spirit. And their minds are opened and they understand the enormity of what's going on, not just on the cross, but that you send in the... Uh, the the, the saviour into the world very God, very human Emmanuel, God with us and through the cross our sins are forgiven through the resurrection we death is conquered and we have hope eternal but Lord we pray that we would not just breathe in the Holy Spirit but we would be filled with the Holy Spirit and that he would have sway in our lives, he would Help us to understand. Help us to lead us into all truth that we would go and make disciples in this world around us. Grant us success as we go to our families, our friends, our our neighbours, our community, into our, our, our cities and towns and villages, into the world. May we make disciples that are following you and will we rejoice one day when we celebrate with them in heaven so once again we thank you for the resurrection and what you've done for us and bless us now in Jesus name Amen Amen. Thank you Andy One final song Build your kingdom here and then the service will be over just remind you there's coffee and uh, tea in the other room but if anybody would like prayer please come to the front and with that we can uh, have someone to pray with you. Thank you. Thanks, Andy.